Tell me, what scares you the most? The possibility that love is not enough. Ah, I... Wait, what? What am I supposed to do with that? Couldn't you be afraid of snakes or something like that? Snakes? I think you're confusing me with another guy. That's why I mainly work with kids. Their fears are a lot less abstract. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I normally review action figures, but today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I just got home from a toy show and thought I'd try my hand at a haul video. Not only is it fun for me to kind of show off and tell you about my experience, but it also is going to give you a little bit of a hint at what's going to be coming on down the road. But because it's me, I kind of want to do things my own unique way. So instead of the typical, well, I got this and I got this, we're going to be doing the whole shebang over at the review station. That way I can really show everything off. For those who are wondering, this was the Spring Hill Toy Jam. Spring Hill is located in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, also called Florida's Nature Coast. I unfortunately didn't get any pictures or video of the event itself, because I actually didn't think of doing a video until I was on my way home. But if you like this, I go to a lot of toy shows and we'll do that in the future. Before we jump in though, just a couple of points of housekeeping. First things first, I get a lot of requests to do a room tour. Now if you're looking behind me, you might notice that all the DC figures aren't where they normally are. Instead, I have all these shoe boxes. These are a bunch of different figures that I have organized for the comparison section of playability. This one, for example, is the Joker collection. Long story short, I have heard your request and I do want to do the tour. And with the 5,000 subscriber mark just around the corner, I thought that might be a really fun opportunity for it. Also, my 200th video is coming up in a couple of weeks and that's going to be really special too. On the subject of showing off my collection, though, I kind of want to do a two-pronged approach. I want to show off the room, at least this current version of it, but a lot of my collection is not actually on display, so I want to make some individual videos to spotlight some different collections. Kind of similar to how I do Action Figure Evolution, but instead of a character, it would be a whole line. Regarding this haul, I don't know about you, but when I go to Comic Cons or shows or whatever, I always give myself a budget. When you're surrounded by all those things, it's really easy to get swept up and just want to buy everything, and that's a great way of bankrupting yourself. For this event, I gave myself a budget of $220. And you know what? I ended up coming in two whole dollars under budget. Point being, just a word of advice, if you're going to go to toy shows, always do that. Give yourself a limit, and more importantly, don't be afraid to haggle. Some vendors won't budge, but others are happy to make you a deal. Lastly, I want to take a moment to just thank all of you who reached out to me and wished me a happy birthday. You guys are the best, and I just wanted to thank you for helping to make my day special. And now, without further ado, let's go over the review station and see what I got. First things first, and here we have the original Super Powers Collection Penguin. Thanks to the new McFarlane figures, I've definitely been on a Super Powers kick, and the one that I normally show off in my videos is a bit worse for wear. In fact, this isn't even Super Powers. This is the one made by Toy Biz. Sadly, Oswald's missing his umbrella and coattails, but the paint job is pristine, and the vendor let me have him for only $2.50. Not $2.50, only $2.50. Speaking of Super Powers, I also managed to snag this Martian Manhunt. Hunter. This is one I've been wanting for a while, and seeing him with other superpowers, both old and new, is pretty cool. At $30, he was definitely one of my more expensive purchases, but for a superpower is in this good a shape, that is pretty par for the course, especially when they include their original cape. Also, I might just have a couple of Martian Manhunter vs. videos on the way, and this little guy is going to come in handy. And in case you're wondering, his action feature does work. I wasn't really planning on doing this smallest to largest, but here we go. This is the original Marvel Secret Wars Iron Man by Mattel. For those of you who don't know, this is actually Rhodey in the suit, not Tony. This figure was one of my favorites as a kid, but unfortunately I tried my hand at repainting it, and I've been longing for the original. If you're curious, here's a side by side with that. Also, I might just have a special video that I'm slowly working towards. For one more smaller scaled figure, and here we have the DC Comics Multiverse Michael Keaton Batman. This is a three and three quarter inch figure, and while I don't normally collect those, I do seem to pick up a lot of vehicles and have been wanting to have this guy for comparisons. I'm not sure if it's something that deserves its own video, but if it's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Next up, and here we have the 90s era DC Universe Classics Aquaman. I mainly got got this one just for my personal collection instead of a video. It's my favorite Aquaman design and Mattel knocked it out of the park. I'd already gotten Black Manta at a previous show, but I love how he looks with the rest of the team. All I need now is Mullet Superman and Kyle Rayner. For 
another DC figure by Mattel, and here we have the Batman Legacy Mr. Freeze. This figure is inspired by his color scheme from the Super Powers collection, but is really just a repaint of Mr. Freeze from the Batman 2003 series. Thanks to the handle on his freeze gun being broken, the vendor gave him to me for only five bucks. At the last toy show I went to, I finally managed to nab a classic Two-Face. Now, my Silver Age Batman villain collection is nearly complete. Speaking of classic style Batman villains, here we have the Scarecrow. This one was part of a Super Friends 2 pack by DC Direct. I managed to get him loose for 10 bucks. This is a figure I wanted for my personal collection because I love Scarecrow so much, but I also thought it would be fun to have for figure comparisons. Before we continue, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a like. This video is an experiment for me, so it would really help more people to see it. Moving on to something completely different, and here we have an Aliens Power Loader by Kenner. Strictly speaking, I already have one of these, but mine was in an attic for years where it was chewed up by rats. And as you can see, this one is in much better shape and also has all the original stickers. More importantly, the vendor gave it to me for only five bucks. Who knows what I'll do with the spare? Moving into the Marvel section of the video, and here we have Monster Venom. I managed to get this loose for only 30 bucks, which is what it retailed for when it came out, but on the aftermarket now goes for a lot more. In my Iron Spider video, I mentioned that there's a few new Venom figures coming, and let's just say I'm planning on a very special Venom Versus. For a couple of inbox items, and here we have the Marvel Legends Epic Heroes Iron Man by Hasbro. This figure was later re-released as part of the retro card line, but the gold that they used was a lot more orangey. I wanted this one because it better fits the color scheme of my preferred Iron Man figures, but now that I see it side by side with them, I can already tell he's going to be a bit bit small. Fortunately, it was only 10 bucks, and although I wasn't planning on doing a video on it, if it's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. For something near and dear to my heart, here we have the Superior Spider-Man from Marvel Select. This is a figure that I had and sold and always regretted letting go. I love this figure, and the Superior Spider-Man is one of my favorite runs of the comic. The vendor let me have him for 20 bucks, which is even less than I paid for him originally, and with such a big emphasis on Spider-Man for the rest of the year, you can best be sure that there will be a video on this guy. One thing that's sure to surprise a lot of you is Star Wars. If you've been watching my channel for long enough, you'd know I do have a few Black Series figures. Granted, these aren't the most current versions, but they're good enough for me, and I'm very happy to let you know that my first Star Wars action figure review is right around the corner. For the final item in today's haul, and here we have the 3-in-1 Batcave playset by Spin Master. Oh, and sorry for the glare. Not only is this a really cool Batcave for smaller scale figures, but you can flip it around for Gotham City. There are three separate levels and it comes with a Batman. For all the smaller scale DC figures I've been doing lately, I thought it'd be really great to have for the figure photography, and I also couldn't say no to the price. New at retail, this thing went for about 40 bucks. The vendor sold it to me for 15. If there's one takeaway from this video, it's go to toy shows, and if there are two takeaways, it's don't be afraid to haggle. I hope you enjoyed this haul video. Again, this was an experiment for me, so let me know in the comments if you liked it and if you want to see more of it, or if there's anything I could have done better. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.